بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, So we reached um, the ninth sitting or the ninth lesson and ninth sitting and it's uh, with regards to um, the wisdom behind fasting so the different uh, wisdoms uh, behind fasting and the shaykh is going to go through that for us inshallah and um, let's start by reading uh, the introduction inshallah alhamdulillahi mudabbiral mudabbiral layali wal ayami wa musarrif al shuhuri wal awami al malik al quddus al salami al mutafarrid bil adamati wal baqa'i wal dawami المتنزه عن النقائس ومشابهة الأنام يرى ما في داخل العروق وبواتن العظام ويسمع خفي الصوت ولطيف الكلام إله رحيم كثير الإنعام ورب كدير شديد الانتقام قدر الأمور فأجراها على أحسن نظام وشرع الشرائع فأحكمها أيما إحكامي بقدرته تهب الرياح ويسير الغمام وبحكمته ورحمته تتعاقب الليالي والأيام أحمده على جليل الصفات وجميل الإنعام وأشكره شكرا من طلب من طلب المزيد ورام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الذي لا يحد لا تحيط به الوقول والأوهام وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أفضل الأنام صلى الله عليه وعلى صاحبه أبي بكر الصابق إلى الإسلام وعلى عمر الذي إذا رآه الشيطان هام وعلى عثمان الذي جهز بماله جيش العسرة وأقام وعلى علي البحر الخضم خضمي والأسد الضرغام وعلى سائر آله وأصحابه وتابعين لهم بإحسان على الدوام وسلم تسليما <coughs> So the Sheikh he begins as you, as you accustomed to it um, this introduction and he says uh, all praise is to Allah alone the one who arranges and takes care of the affair of the day and the night the one who rotates the months and the years, the king, the one who is free from all deficiency. So it says the king uh, and, the, and the pure and the king and the one who is holy, the one who is free from all deficiency, the owner of exclusive possession of greatness, the one who possesses greatness. Eternity and perpetuity. He is free from incompleteness and from resembling his creatures. He sees what is inside the veins and the bones. You know, he sees us from that perspective clearly. The vein from the veins and the bones. And he hears secret, he hears the conversations low in voice or in sound, low in sound. Um, and also, uh, he hears um, the, he also, as I mentioned here, he hears, you know, a beautiful speech as well. So that which is hidden from us, for example, somebody might be whispering, then, uh, you know, he hears all and he hears, uh, as, as mentioned here, Latif al Kalami, you know, from, from beautiful speech and good words as well, as such. So he hears everything, basically. Allah has everything. He is the deity of mercy and owner of abundant bounties. 
and he is a lord of might, severe in his punishment. He decreed, he decreed the affairs and made them run in the best order. He laid down the legislations with wisdom. So he laid down the Sharia, the legislation with wisdom. It is with his power that the wind blows and the clouds move. The alternation of the day and night happened with his wisdom and mercy. <clears throat> and then the Sheikh says, he continues, says, I praise him for his great attributes and outflowing bounties. I thank him. The thanks of the one who asks for more and I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone in truth and the one who is beyond all thoughts and imaginations that we can't obviously think of him. I further bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and may Allah bestow peace and blessings upon him Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu the first to embrace Islam Umar radiallahu, uh, radiallahu anhu, the one who the devil was afraid of. Uthman radiallahu anhu, the one who prepared the army of hardship with his wealth. And upon Ali radiallahu anhu, the ocean of knowledge and the brave lion. Upon the, and, the, and upon the rest of his family members, his companions. And those who follow their foot, in their footsteps till the day of judgment. So that's the introduction inshallah. So we'll carry on reading. So the Shaykh, he says, um, he says, Ibadullah, I'lamu rahimakumullah, anna Allah subhanahu lahu al-hikam al-tam wal-hikmatu al-baligha fi ma khalaqahu wa fi ma shara'ahu. Fahu al-hakimu fi khalqihi wa fi shara'ihi lam yakhluq ibadahu laiban wa lam yatrukum suda wa lam yashra' lahum al-shara'i abathan. Uh, just for the new brothers here, sorry, just for the new brothers here, uh, we normally read the Arabic so you can hear the Arabic and then we translate the Arabic, just in case you may be wondering. So we'll just go back to where I was reading. Bal khalaqahum li amrin azim, li amrin azim, wa hayyahum li khutabin jaseem, wa bayyana lahum al-sirat al-mustaqeem. وشرع لهم أشراع يزداد بها إيمانهم وتكمل بها إبادتهم فما من إبادة إبادة شرعها شرعها الله لإباده إلا لحكمة بالغة علمها من علمها وجهلها من جهلها وليس جهلنا بحكمة شيء بحكمة شيء من الإبادات دليلا على أنه لا حكمة لها بل هو دليل على أجزنا وقصورنا عن إدراك حكمة الله سبحانه لقوله تعالى وما أوتيتم من العلم إلا قليلا So um, let's read and translate that uh, and go back and translate what we read in Arabic So then the Sheikh uh, Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin رحمه الله He starts off and he says O slaves of Allah, know, may Allah have mercy upon you, that Allah the glorified has the complete authority and perfect wisdom in what he has created and legislated. He is the wise in his creation and his legislation. So he is wise in his creation and his legislation. He has not created his slaves in vain and has not left them aimlessly without a purpose. He has not legislated the legislations in vain either. Rather, he created the human being for, for a great purpose, a higher purpose, and he clarified for them the straight path. He legislated upon them the legislations in order for them to increase in their faith, and so that they may complete their acts of worship. There is no act of worship that Allah legislates except there is a perfect wisdom behind it. It is known by those who know it and unknown to those who do not know of it. Just because we are ignorant of some of the wisdom behind certain legislations or legislature does not mean that there is no wisdom within that. Rather, it proves our inability of discovering the wisdom behind it and our deficiency in knowledge. This is based on Allah's statement in the Quran. And we read that just earlier on. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنْ عِلْمِ إِلَا قَلِيلًا and that's in uh, Surah, Surah Al-Isra, verse 85, for your reference. 
Um, and and the rough translation of that is, you are not given anything from knowledge but a little. So, you know, we, we, we've only been given a small amount of knowledge, even though to us, it seems like, you know, there's so many things that, that we think we might know, um, deen wise also in the dunya as well, but we've only been given, you know, a drop in the ocean, as an example. So let's continue reading, inshallah. So, um, we're here. <clears throat> وَقَدْ شَرَعَ اللَّهُ الْإِبَادَاتِ وَنَذَّمَ الْمُعَامَلَاتِ إِبْتِلَاءً وَامْتِحَانًا لِإِبَادِهِ لِيَتَبَيِّنَ بِذَلِكَ مَنْ كَانَ عَابِدًا لِمَوْلَاهُ مِمَّنْ كَانَ عَابِدًا لِهَوَاهُ فَمَنْ تَقَبَّلَ هَذِي شَرَعِيَ وَتِلْكَ النَّذَمْ بِصَدْرِ مُنْشَرِهِنْ بِصَدْرِ مُنْشَرِهِنْ وَنَفْسِ وَنَفْسِ مُطْمَعِنَّةٍ فَهُوَ عَابِدًا لِمَوْلَاهُ راض بشريعته مقدم لطاعة ربه على هوى نفسه ومن كان لا يقبل من العبادات ولا ولا يتبع من من النظم إلا ما ناسب رغبته ووافق مراده فهو عابد لهوى لهواه أو لهواه ساخط لشريعة الله مؤرض عن طاعة ربه جعل جعل هواه متبوءا لا تابعا وأراد أن يكون شرع الله تابعا لرغبته ما مع قصور علمه وقلة حكم حكمته قال الله تعالى ولو اتبع ولو اتبع الحق أهواءهم لفسدت السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن بل آتيناهم بذكرهم فهم عن ذكرهم مؤرضون سورة المؤمن فم سورة المؤمنون بس 71 ومن حكمة الله سبحانه أن جعل الإبادات متنوعة ليتمحص القبول والرضا وليمحص الله الذين آمنوا فإن من الناس من قد يرضى بنوع من العبادات ويلتزم به ويسخط نوعا اخر ويفرط فيه فجعل الله فجعل الله من العبادات ما يتع ما يتعلق بعمل البدن كالصلاة ومنها ما يتعلق ببذل المال المحبوب الى النفس كالزكاة ومنها ما يتعلق بعمل البدن وبذل المال جميعا جميعا كالحج وال كالحج والجهاد ومنها ما يتعلق بكف النفس عن محب عن محبوباتها ومتش ومشتهياتها كصيام فإذا قام العبد بهذه العبادات المتنوعة وأكملها على الوجه المطلوب منه دون سخط أو تفريط فتعب وعمل وبذلك ما كان محبوب إليه وكف أما تش أما تشت أما تشتهيه نفسه طاعة لربه وامتثالا لأمره ورضا بشرعه كان ذلك دليلا على كمال عبوديته وتمام انقياده ومحبته لربه وتعذيمه له, له فتحقق فيه وصف العبودية, وصف العبودية لله رب العالمين So we'll just stop there because that's a quite a long paragraph so let's just go back over here. <clears throat> so then the shaykh continues and he says, um, Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed legislated the legislation that arranged the transactions between the slaves as a trial and a test for his slaves um, in order to distinguish between the one who is sincere and truthful in worshipping Allah from the one who worships his desires or follows his desires instead. Therefore, Therefore, whoever acknowledges these legislations with an open heart, with an open heart, and with with his soul being tranquil as well, it, um, is indeed somebody who is a worshiper of his Lord, worshiper of Allah, uh, pleased with whatever he has legislated, and has chosen and has decided to obey his Lord instead of his own personal desires, whatever he desires. As for the one who did not turn to the worship of his Lord. And only followed his uh, and uh, and and didn't turn to the worship of his Lord in accordance with the legislation of his Lord. 
um, because of his desires, then such an individual worships his desires, he follows his desires, and he dislikes Allah's legislation and turns away from being obedient to his Lord. This individual made his heart to be followed instead of making it that which follows. So he, he followed what his heart desired rather than making his heart follow what was correct or what was right, i.e. being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and despite the deficiency of his knowledge and wisdom, Allah the Most High said in the Quran, we, we mentioned the ayah in Arabic, we'll read that in English now, the rough translation of it being, and if the truth had been in accordance with their desires, verily the heavens and the earth, whoever is therein would have been corrupted. Nay, we have brought them their reminder. We have brought them their reminder, but they turn away from the, their reminder. They turn away from it. Go the opposite direction. 180 degrees, the other direction. That's from Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 71. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, And from Allah's wisdom is that he has legislated upon us different kinds of worship. There's different types of worship in order for us to accept them with pleasure and as a purification for the believers. From amongst the slaves, there are some who are pleased with, a cer with certain acts of worship and thus they stick to it and may not be pleased with other types of worship. So in the end, as a result of that, they neglect that which they are not comfortable with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made some acts of worship relate to our limbs and some of uh, 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 such as a prayer. So we move during the prayer, you know, there's actions of movement. While other acts of worship relate to our wealth, you know, such as uh, such as giving zakat, the obligatory charity, or even the optional charity is sadaqah as well, as an example. Uh, and other acts of worship combined between these two, such as uh, making the pilgrimage to the house of the Kaaba, which is a uh, hajj and umrah, uh, and also jihad. So there are some acts of worship uh, which relate to holding the soul from his desire and lust, such as fasting. And when the slave established these acts of worship and completed them in a manner required from him without disliking or neglecting them or, or you know, being put off by them, rather while working diligently, becoming fatigued, sacrificing that uh, what is precious to him for the sake of his Lord and restraining his soul and himself from what, what he desires out of obedience to his Lord and adhering to Allah's commandments while being pleased with his legislation, this indeed indicates the completeness of the person's servitude to his Lord and his total submission in Iyad, his total submission to Allah's will, his submission to Allah's will. It also indicates his love and uh, veneration for his Lord. As a result, he deserves to be described as a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all the worlds. So let's continue reading where we left off from. So then the Sheikh says, إِذَا تَبَيْنَ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّ لِصْيَامِ حِكَمًا كَثِيرَةً إِسْتَوْجَبَتْ أَنْ يَكُونَ فَرِيدَةً مِنْ فَرَادَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَرُكْنًا مِنْ أَرْكَانِهِ So then the Sheikh says, so if you ponder over everything that we've read so far and we've studied in this, in this book and the benefits that we've uh, gained and understanding from all that we have uh, read and uh, listened to so far, uh, then it is quite clear to us the um, the wisdoms behind fasting are many and the reason why fasting uh, was made an obligation for example fasting in the month of the Ramadan was made an obligation and it is uh, from the pillars of Islam so then the Shaykh continues after making that point and he says فَمِنْ, فمن حِكْمِ الصِّيَامِ أَنَّهُ إِبَادَةٌ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى يتقرب العبد فيها إلى ربه بترك محبوباته ومشتهياته من طعام وشراب ونكاح فيظهر بذلك صدق إيمانه وكمال عبوديته لله وقوة محبته له ورجائه ما عنده 
فإن الإنسان لا يترك لا يترك محبوبا له إلا لما هو أعظم عنده منه ولما علم المؤمن أن أن رضا الله في الصيام بترك شهواته المجبول على محبته محبتها قدم رضا مولاه على هواه فتركها أشد أشد ما يكون شوقا إليها لأن لذات لأن لذات لذاته لذاته وراحة نفس وراحة نفسه في ترك ذلك لله عز وجل ولذلك كان كثير من المؤمنين لو ضرب أو حبس على أن يفطر يوما من رمضان بدون عذر لم يفطر وهذه الحكمة من أبلغ حكم الصيام وأعظمها So let's just uh, stop there and translate that. <clears throat> so uh, from among the wisdoms behind the legislation of fasting is that it is an act of worshipping the Most High in which the slave seeks closeness to his Lord by deserting things which are beloved to him. You know, he, he, he prevents himself from the things he loves, uh, such as food and drink. Uh, and and uh, as mentioned here, you know, uh, relations with uh, with his wife, for example. And by doing this, the truthfulness of his faith becomes apparent. It becomes clear. And along with um, his total servitude, strong love for his Lord and the extent of his hope in Allah. This is because the human being will not leave something that he loves except for something that he loves more. And when the believer knows that the pleasure of his Lord is in fasting by abstaining from things that he loves and desires, he gave he gives pref, uh, preference to the pleasure of his lord over his own pleasure so he leaves things that he loves despite his love for it uh, and this is because um that the heart itself is in a state of tranquility uh, and 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 in, in you know in leaving those things he finds it easy in leaving those things for the sake of uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and so for this reason many believers if they were imprisoned and tortured in order to break their fast for a single day without a legislated excuse, they would not do so. This wisdom is the greatest of all the wisdoms behind fasting. And some of the uh, those reasons regarding, you know, the excuses that, that we may have, for example, uh, fast uh, traveling and other things, um, uh, we discussed that, uh, Brother Wasim discussed it in the lessons before um, uh, this lesson. So the different reasons why you may break your fast. Um, so you can have a look at that, inshallah, if you if you're new to the lessons. <clears throat> so let's continue. And then, um, then the Sheikh mentions um, mentions an ayah, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to it in a second. وَمِنْ حِكْمِ الصِّيَامِ أَنَّهُ سَبَبٌ لِتَقْوَى كَمَا قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لكم تتقون فإن الصائم مأمور بفعل الطاعات واجتناب المعاصي كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من لم من لم يدع قول الزور والعمل والعمل به والعمل به والجهل فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه رواه البخاري وإذا كان صائم متلبسا بالصيام فإنه كلما هم بمعصية تذكر أنه صائم فامتنع عنها ولهذا أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صائما أن يقول لمن صابه أو شاتمه إن امرؤ صائم تنبيها له على أن صائما مأمور بالإمساك عن السب والشتم وتذكير لنفسه بأنه متلبس بالصيام فيمتنع عن المقابلة بالصب والشتم. So let's go through that then. So then um, the ayah that's mentioned here, and it says from the among the wisdoms uh, behind the legislation of fasting, is that it is a means of attaining uh, piety, a taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa taala said in His book, He said, Ya ayuha ladina amanu, kutib alaykum al-siyamu. كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون 
and we, this uh, uh, Quran ayah uh, has been mentioned several times already uh, during this book and the rough translation of it being all you who believe fasting is prescribed on you as it was prescribed on those who came before you so that you may attain piety at taqwa Surah Al-Baqarah verse 193 so let's continue so then you know the fasting person is, is commanded with doing acts of obedience and abstaining from sins as the Prophet Sallallahu also said here, uh, which we read in Arabic, so in the English translation of that is, whoever does not leave the statements of slander or doing an act of slander and ignorance, then Allah is not in need of his uh, fasting, basically. Allah is, is not in need of his uh, abstinence from food and drink. And that's in, uh, collected by Al-Bukhari. Uh, so likewise, the one who fasts whenever he intends to commit sin and then remembers, that he's fasting, he stops himself because he reminds himself, oh, look, I'm fasting. He stops himself from falling into that sin. Um, this is the reason why the Prophet wasallam commanded the one who is observing the fast to say to the one who insults him or tries to pick a fight with him, verily, I am a fasting person or I'm, I'm fasting. That I'm fasting, I'm fasting. In order to remind him that the fasting man is prohibited from cursing and insulting and to remind himself that he's fasting so as to avoid taking revenge by cursing and insulting in return. So let's continue reading, insha'Allah. وَمِنْ حِكْمِ سِيَامِ أَنَّ الْقَلْبَ يَتَخَلَّى لِلْفِكْرِ وَالذِّكْرِ لِأَنَّ تَنَاوُلَ الشَّهَوَاتِ يَسْتَوْجِبُ الْغَفْلَةَ وَرُبَّمَا يُقَسِّ الْقَلْبَ وَيُعْمَى عَنِ الْحَقِّ وَلِذَلِكَ أَرْشَدَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِلَى التَّخْفِيفِ مِنَ الطَّعَامِ وَالشَّرَابِ فَقَالَ فَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَا مَلَأَ ابْنُ آدَمَ وِيَانٍ شَرًّا مِنْ بَطْنٍ بِحَسَبِ ابْنِ آدَمَ لُقِيمَاتٌ يُقْمَنْ صُلْبَهُ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَا مَحَالَةَ فَثُلُثٌ لِطَعَامِهِ وَثُلُثٌ لِشَرَابِهِ وَثُلُثٌ لِنَفْسِهِ رواه أحمد والنسائي وابن ماجة. Um, so in this uh, paragraph, then the Sheikh also says so some more wisdoms of fasting. So from among the other wisdoms behind fasting uh, is or are that is that the heart becomes occupied with contemplation and with the remembrance of Allah. This is because engaging in fulfilling our desires necessitates negligence of the heart. And it's one of the reasons why the heart becomes negligent and is cause for the heart becoming hard and blinded from the truth. So it becomes blinded and it becomes like a stone hard. This is the reason why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guided us and advised us was to lessen our eating and drinking as he said. In the rough translation of the hadith that we read, the son of Adam never fills up a vessel that is worse than, the be than his belly. Or than his stomach, few mouthfuls of food that keeps up the backbone of the son of Adam is sufficient for him. And if he needs to eat more than those few mouthfuls, then he should give one third for his food and a third for water and a third for his breath for himself. Collected by Ahmad and Nasai and Ibn Majah, and has been a great authentic by Sheikh Al Albani, Rahimahullah, in Sahih Ibn Majah. So, uh, we're all aware of uh, this hadith, alhamdulillah. So, um, we'll continue. So, let's continue from where we left off. وَفِي سَحِيهِ مُسْلِمٍ أَنَّ حَنْظَلَةَ الْأُسَيْدِ وَكَانَ من من كتاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نافق حنظلة فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وما ذاك قال يا رسول الله نكون عندك تذكرنا بالنار والجنة حتى كأن رأي عين فإذا خرجنا من عندك عفسنا الأزواج والأولاد والضيات فنسينا كثيرا الحديث وفيه ولكن يا حنظرة وساعة وساعة ثلاث مرات وقال أبو سليمان الداراني إن النفس إذا جاءت وعطشت 
صفى القلب ورق وإذا شبعت أمي القلب So um, let's just go through that Also it is narrated uh, Also it is narrated in Sayyid Muslim That Hanzala al-Usaydi One of the scribes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Verily Hanzala has, has become a hypocrite So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, sallallahu alayhi wasallam Said to him uh, And what is that What you're saying and, and what is that That you're saying He said O oh, Messenger of Allah we would be with you and you would remind us of the hellfire and of paradise to the point that we would feel like we can see them with our own eyes. But once we leave from being with you and leave your company and we begin to mix with our families, for example, our wives, children and our families, we forget most of these reminders collected by Muslim. And then the Sheikh continues, he says, Also, Abu Sulaiman Ad-Darani said, Verily, once the souls... Start, once the soul starves and feel th feels thirsty, the heart becomes pure, clean, and soft. But then it is full. But when it is full, the heart turns blind. It becomes blind with fullness. So um, let's continue, inshallah. ومن حكم الصيام أن الغنية يعرف به قدر نعمة نعمة الله عليه بالغنى حيث أنما الله تعالى عليه بالطعام والشراب والنكاح وقد وقد حرم حرمها كثير من الخلق فيحمد الله على هذه هذه النعمة ويشكره على هذا التيسير ويذكر بذلك أخاه الفقير الذي ربما يبيت طاوي طاويا جائيا فيجود عليه بالصدقه او يقسو بها اورات اورته ويصد بها جوعته ولذلك كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اجود الناس وكان اجود ما يكون في رمضان حين يلقاه هنا يلقاه جبريل فيدارسه القرآن. So let's go through that, inshallah, paragraph by paragraph. So from the wisdoms of fasting also is that the rich will, uh, the rich recognize Allah's blessings and bounties upon them. For indeed, Allah's blessed them with food and drink and you know marriage uh, and plenty of other bounties uh, that we can't count and that. You know, many of the other people and other creatures have been deprived of. As a result, the rich person will be grateful to Allah for for, for the bounties that he's been blessed with, and he thank, thanking him upon this ease, remembering him with that, uh, and, and and with that remembering his poor brother, who or his poor brothers who probably sleep empty bellied, and are. Uh, during the night, for example, or, or the extent of the night, no food, nothing. And, you know, uh, having food or anything like that. And and also, and consequently, and as a result of that, in conclusion of that, the rich person, he will be generous towards his brothers, his poorer brothers, with a charity by which he will, you know, clothe, clothe them and, you know, and help feed them, buy food for them or, you know, give them money that so that they can eat and drink and clothe themselves. The Prophet ﷺ was the most generous person, but he used to be more generous in the month of Ramadan when Jibreel السلام, would come and study the Qur'an with him and teach him the Qur'an and they would study the Qur'an. So let's continue. So from, uh, so then Shaykh continues, he says, وَمِنْ حِكْمِ السِّيَامِ تَمَرُّنُ على ضبط النفس وسيطرة وسيطرة عليها والقوة على الإمساك بزمامها حتى يتمكن من التحكم فيها ويقود ويقودها إلى ما فيه خيرها وسعادتها فإن النفس أمارة بسوء إلا ما رحم ربي فإذا أطلق المرء لنفسه عنانها أو 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 قعته في في المهالك وإذا ملك أمره أمرها وسيطر عليها 
تمكن من قيادتها إلى أعلى المراتب وأسنى المطالب. So then the uh, Sheikh says, so from also from the wisdoms of fasting is you know training yourself to be disciplined and disciplining yourself and to exhibit uh, self-control uh, and to have the strength of holding uh, it you know uh, its bridle. I was meaning here that having discipline uh, and uh, with yourself and disciplining yourself and having control in order in in order to be able to guide uh, uh, the soul and control it and do that in which lies its happiness and benefit um very the soul uh, by its nature by the by the very nature of our souls the way they've been created they incline they incline towards evil and desires that's just the way we created the soul is created it wants to you know it loves the desires it wants to follow these desires it wants to be lazy and things like this the one so the ones that are protected by our lord through his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala so if a man lets go of his soul's bridle or uh, lets go of keeping control of his soul it will drag him to destruction it will destroy him and i'm sure we can all relate to many of these uh, stories that we see people where they're not disciplined uh, and they just go from one desire to the next up until they just destroy themselves and they're finished. Uh, and a lot of those situations, as, as we know, uh, for example, these um, actors and actresses, for example, as one prime example, uh, they have everything. They have the money, they have everything, but they go from one desire to the next, no discipline, nothing, and then they end up committing suicide uh, as one example. Um, so then the Sheikh says, but if the individual takes control of his soul, he will be able to lead it to the highest rank and almost goal. So if, if, if we are able to control our soul and control it and don't let it, you know, control us, but rather we control it and keep it repressed from uh, going for those things that will lead to our destruction, then in the end, whoever's achieved that has achieved, you know, the highest and loftiest of goals. And what sought from the Muslim or what sought from the slaves of Allah. So uh, let's continue, inshallah, from uh, where the Sheikh left off. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, وَمِنْ حِكَمِ الصِّيَامِ كَسْرُ النَّفْسِ وَالْحَدُّ مِنْ كِبْرِيَائِهَا حَتَّى تَخْذَعَ لِلْحَقِّ وَتَلِينَ لِلْخَلْقِ فَإِنَّ الشِّبْعَ وَالْرِّيَأْ وَمُبَاشِرَةَ النِّسَاءِ يَحْمِلُ كُلٌّ مِنْهَا عَلَى الْأَشَرِ وَالْبَطَرِ وَالْعُلُوِّ وَالْتَكَبُّرِ عَلَى الْخَلْقِ وَعَنِ الْحَقِّ و... وذلك أن النفس عند ال... عند احتياجها لهذه الأمور تشتغل بتحصيلها فإذا تمكنت منها رأت أنها ظفرت بمطلوبها فيحصل لها من الفر... من الفرح المذموم والبتر ما يكون سببا لهلاكها والمعصوم من عصمه الله تعالى so then the Sheikh also he continues and he, and he says, um, also from uh, the wisdoms of fasting, is that, you know, it breaks down the soul and puts restriction to its pride, to its pride and arrogance that it may have until it submits to the truth and is humble to the creation. For, uh, for, for indeed, uh, satisfaction from food and drink and it, intimacy with, with women, with women, with, with wives and fam, etc., all lead to self-deceit, uh, pride and arrogance. Uh, which ultimately results in belittling the creation and rejecting the truth. And so that is because when the soul needs these, needs these things and requires them, it becomes busy in trying to obtain them in whichever way it can. And But once a person obtains them, he feels like he has succeeded in his mission. This produces um, within him the blamewor blameworthy kind of pride which leads to his destruction. The safe one is is the one who is saved by Allah. So the one who restrains his soul, as uh, the Sheikh mentioned. So um, uh, let's continue. Okay, we're nearly finished. So we just have about half a page to go, inshallah. Stay with me. Barakallahu <clears throat> feekum. So the Sheikh says, وَمِنْ حِكْمِ سِيَامِ أَنَّ مَجَارِيَ الدَّمِي تضيق بسبب تضيق بسبب الجوع والعطش فتضيق مجاري الشيطان من البدن فإن الشيطان يجري من من ابن آدم مجرى مجرى الدم كما ثبت ذلك في الصحيحين عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
fataskunu bisiyami wa fataskunu bisiyami wa sawisu shaytani wa tankasiru suratu shahwati wal ghadabi wa lidhalika qala al-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallama ya ma'shar al-shababi man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawaj fa innahu aghaddu fa innahu aghaddu lil-basari wa ahsanu lil-faraji wa man lam yastati' fa alayhi bisawmi fa innahu lahu wija' mutafaqun alayhi فجعل الصوم وجاء لشهوة النكاح وكسرا لحدتها so then the shaykh says he says so from the wisdoms behind fasting also uh, the, the blood vessels become narrow due to hunger and thirst and as a result the passage of the devil becomes narrow as well this is because the devil travels in the son of Adam through the blood through his blood vessels through his veins, uh, as is known. Uh, and as it is authenticated in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, therefore, with fasting, the uh, the, the devilish insinuation or the devil uh, and the booster or, or, or the, 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 the desire, you know, to do wrong things and uh, things like anger, it calms down. Your, your, your body, it calms down. You know, it doesn't feel the same kind of strength and desire to attain those things as mentioned in the previous paragraph. This is the reason why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said he said to a group of youth, "O oh youth, whoever amongst you who has the ability to marry, he should get married, because it is the best way of lowering the lowering the gaze and preserving chastity. But whoever cannot afford to do so, then he should fast, for verily it weakens one's desires, and it weakens one's desires, and it's a reason." And it's a block in the way of him, so it blocks him from um, committing sins as well. And also that, obviously, in our time, I just want to mention extra benefit before we go. And that, in obviously, in our time, um, uh, the way marriage is is that it's become complicated. Uh, you know, the uh, the the dowry is high, and families ask for uh, X, Y, and Z things, and they make things difficult uh, with people getting married. And you know this is something that we need to be more wise about, as well uh, from the prophet, uh, from the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he said mentioned here from one of the many wisdoms is this: what we just read that that you know when people are young, you know they have these desires; it's just natural. So when so it's better to encourage to marry um, our uh, our youth, marry them off um, um, if they cannot, you know, if there's an issue, as mentioned here in terms of. Uh, lowering their gaze, you know, in terms of the desires of controlling them, because um, otherwise they would fall into major sins. And a major sin, as the scholars mention, is that whoever falls into a major sin, for example, zina in this situation, in this context, then uh, you know, they, they say that on the day of judgment, the, this person will have to be purified in the hellfire. And who wants to go in the hellfire if Allah doesn't forgive you? And that's something that we shouldn't be so hopeful about, and that we balance love and hope and fear. In, 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 so that they're all balanced Because if we be too hopeful Then we're going to say Oh no worries inshallah Allah is going to forgive us On the day of judgment anyway As long as I'm upon Tawheed of Allah For example And I, But you know How can he promise yourself Something that you have no knowledge of So we need to Take things in a practical sense And how our deen uh, Has taught us And to look at things uh, uh, Wisely uh, To uh, um, Abstain And to protect ourselves And give us the best Success in this world and the next. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, um, where do we finish off here? وَمِنْ حِكْمِ السِّيَامِ مَا يَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْفَوَائِدِ السِّحِيَّةِ أَلَّاتِ تَحْسُلُ بِتَقْلِيلِ الطَّعَامِ وَإِرَاحَةِ جِهَازِ الْهَضْمِ لِمُدَّةٍ مُعِيْنَةٍ وَتَرَصُّبِ بَعْدِ الرُّتُوبَاتِ وَالْفَضْلَاتِ الضَّارَّةِ بالجسم وغير ذلك فما أعظم حكمة الله وأبلغها ومن وما أنفع شر شرائعه للخلق وأس وأصلح وأص وأصلحها. so then the sheikh finishes off um, with the final benefit from his own lesson and he says and the final um, uh, wisdom that he mentions here is is that what fasting brings about is the healthiness that results from fasting due to minimizing our food and drink 
which allows our digestive systems to relax for a certain period of time and it diminishes the, moist, uh, the moistness and the harmful waste materials in our body and other than that, so it allows its passage from our bod uh, body toxins basically and therefore how great and perfect is our Lord's wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala and how beneficial are his legislations to the creation uh, and you know, uh, science is only learning this now I mean, you see those BBC articles and other places uh, where they're only learning this now but you know, alhamdulillah uh, the Muslims have known this, uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, for thousands of years, you know, hundreds of years, centuries, you know, since the start of Islam. So um, uh, then the Sheikh finishes off with the uh, dua. He says, "Allahumma faqihna fi di fi dinika wa alhim wa alhimna ma'rifata asrari shariyat shariyatik wa aslih lana shu'un al shu'un al dinina wa dunyana." واغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولجميع المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. so the sheikh finishes off with a, a dua as he uh, does as his habit and and the rough translation of that is oh Allah give us understanding of your deen give us understanding of your religion uh, inspires uh, inspires us with the secrets uh, of, of of your legislations. Uh, verily our uh, our religion and worldly affairs, forgive us. Uh, and it's, uh, it says, sorry, it says, rectify our religious and worldly affairs, forgive us, our parents and the rest of the Muslims, with your mercy. Indeed, you are the most merciful. And may the peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family and all his companions. So, inshallah, we finish there and uh, we will resume uh, tomorrow with Brother Wasim. So, we'll see you in the lessons tomorrow as well. Barakallah fikum, subhanakallahu wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa tu bilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.